Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Legendary Ludra campaign. We pick things up for episode 4 from turn 15 in the autumn season of 185. So as we hop back in, um, our war against the Yellow Turbans are going really well. Uh, in our first three episodes, we defeated one of the major armies of the Three Brothers at the end of each. And we ended last episode by defeating Zhang Jiao's army here. You can see they're pretty much shattered. Uh, these two generals are dead and uh, Zhang Jiao will bounce back, uh, the troop will not, and we pretty much have free reign uh, to attack their livestock farm next turn. And then they'll be down to two pieces of land, uh, one in Dai, one in Yemen's uh, lumberyard. And they do have um, other rebel forces throughout the land and a few other minor you know, characters like He Yi's faction, Gongdu's faction, those will still be on the map, but we should be done with the three brothers relatively quickly. And that brings us to our next uh, point here, um, which is that we do have uh, Liu Yan here. And many people have been telling me uh, in the last few episodes in terms of comment that he does have an event in the game where he will leave your faction, similar to how uh, Yuan Shao will get his event, uh, Kong Rong will get his event, uh, mainly when the empire kind of dissolves. And historically, he becomes the governor of... Uh, the E province, you know, soon. So it's going to be interesting to see what we do with him. I think what we can do just to play it safe is to take away his items and we'll continue to let him, you know, hang out in our faction. He's technically our heir, so maybe that will help us. I don't know if that would change anything in terms of triggering the event. Uh, we definitely have officers that can come in and replace him. Now the cruelest thing that we can do uh, for the sake of the campaign is get him killed. Of course, that's one option. Because if we get him killed, we can replace his retinue, you know, with another general. He would need to die twice, uh, relatively quickly. Um, it'd be difficult, because he's a strategist. So it's kind of hard to actually get him killed without him running away. But then we can keep the units forever. Or we're sending them as a gift uh, to his faction that will spawn into the game. Uh, but regardless, that's one thing we have to watch out for. Um, that's fine. Uh, we'll probably summon him onto the field again and he'll be okay. So, Or he's on the field. It, the, the six points will bounce away for lack of purpose and then he'll be fine. So we're using them to farm rebels at this point, which is why they're on cooldown. We're going to set them up again. There's going to be a lot of rebels with fervor up. Uh, there's just nothing we can do about it. These two capitals are really close to each other, so they can take care of both groups with this uh, one army of generals. Um, and our main army will just proceed from there. Uh, speaking of books that we picked up, we are going to talk about two books. We'll talk about one of them at the start of next turn, and then we'll talk about one at the end of the episode. Um, we're going to do multiple books per episode just because things are progressing a little bit quicker than I expected. Now, let's see. The Way Commandery. Do we want to bump it up to Small City? I guess we do. It's relatively safe. Uh, there's no need to keep it low for defensive purposes. It's not going to be a very lucrative Commandery just because it's just a farmland one. But I think we want at least a Small City here. Cost us 3000 it's a little bit pricey, not gonna lie. I think we can cancel this. And then maybe throw our income one back in the Hmm, but in the meantime, do I want this upgrade first? It's very marginal. I guess I'll get the other building slot quicker. That's gonna be probably more profitable for us. Yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. We really don't have the economy, at least not from buildings and taxes. We're going to have to depend on stuff like this. Mm, this is this is definitely going to be a cash payment. Because even if we can get like, yeah, it's definitely going to be a cash payment. Because we can get over like 600 probably. Or close to it. There we go. That's ready better than this. So we'll go with that. Also, he might not survive very long with all the old turban pressure around him. Um, and that's really all we can do. I, I believe there's nothing else we can do. We're keeping that 
open because it's not profitable at this point. Yep, that's all we can do. Let's continue. Alrighty, we're getting a choice between loyalty and duty. Uh, both are wonderful traits. Uh, duty is even better. But it's really about who we want to be good friends with. Um, neither of them will be in our army. So it doesn't really matter. I guess technically Huang Gai could join the army. So we could go with loyalty. Even though it's not as good of a trait. Just because... I really care about this administrator thing. Mm, but I think just relationship at this point. We'll go with this. Because we're potentially going to need a replacement. Potentially. Anyways, before that happens, we march on to more enemy territory. We got character available here. Not interested. Not interested. And... And it. Tell us how. Hmm. Most likely a spy will pass. And our manager. Huh. I mean, it beats not putting anything on him, and you get expertise and resolve and extra peasantry, so why not? Yeah. Alright, he escaped that way. Do I trust this delegate value? Yeah, I think so. How bad can it get? Pretty bad for his health, which might not be a bad thing. Now we can try to get him killed, actually. Mm, it's kind of cruel, but it's definitely something we should consider. And speaking of maybe losing our heir, we should also consider perhaps using a marriage to steal over some characters. Well, I guess Torin doesn't spawn until much later for him, but Lu Bu is always an option. We just need a daughter. We get a 26-year-old Lu Bu from Dingyuan before he loses him to the Dong Zhuo event. We're also saving his life. Uh, if only we can find a suitable daughter. No. Um, we can do a very interesting thing where we can do a range or well, once we have 4,000 we can do a range marriage and divorce that girl and then use that girl or we have to adopt her too. Oh, it's better if we can just get one from this. So you can see no female available to us so we can't really do too much but that's one option we have. No items on her. Don't know if she has items, but it's okay. We're gonna use them to continue to get experience. And also, we had to clean out these rebels anyway, so it's all good. And we can talk about a book. Going to recall anyone for healing? They need it, or just him actually. One guy's fine at that health level, and we're gonna get a rebel group very next turn. Wow, is it this bad here too? Oh, it's this building. It's not really Fervor. Is Fervor dead here? No, it's still positive seven. Hmm. Yeah, as you can see, we can't we can't get rid of the building either. Oh, he's the only assignment. Right, because we've moved everyone. Hmm. We need characters. But I'm also not rich. So I could recruit him. Just to get us... Oh, it's not ideal. If I can get a female strategist or female commander, commander would be even better. Mm, right, so maybe we just have to wait it out. Yeah, this is fine. We picked up a piece of land. They have a bunch of items, though. Ooh, Drunkai. Or Drunkai. Okay. That's fine. We'll be okay. All right, let's pick a book. So last time uh, we talked about two books in particular. We talked about Art of War, Chu uh, Tzu we talked about before, Book of Lord Shang about legalism. And instead of going in order here, the reason why we're not going to talk about Mink, uh, Monkis, or I, don't, I don't know how you would actually pronounce this, but it's Mengzi in Chinese. And um, 
It's because this is more of a Confucian teaching book, and there is a bunch of Confucian teaching book that is in this library and should be grouped together in terms of discussion. So we're going to avoid that for now. Okay, let's talk about Huainanzi. So Huainanzi obviously is named after a location, actually. Um, so Huainan is a commandery in the game. Now the problem here is Huainan, it shouldn't really be a commandery. Uh, because it should be the commandery name of uh, Jiujiang, or Nai Rivers. Um, it used to be the princedom of Huainan, all the way back in the beginning of the Western Han Dynasty. So, if you guys are familiar with the beginning of the Han Dynasty, most of the eastern lands were divided up into princedom and handed out uh, to Liu Bang's sons, um, because um, they were having difficulties with keeping the place under control, uh, not only to his sons, but in the beginning, very, very beginning, many of the notable uh, generals that helped him win the war uh, got princedoms, but Noban quickly killed them and took that back and gave the princedom into his sons instead. That's another story, but uh, eventually it went to most of his sons, passing on to their sons, so basically Imperial Bloodline had a lot of princedoms in the East. And the reason why it was in the east is because the foundation of the Han Dynasty was established out in the west, right? Han is named after uh, Han Zhong or the Han River area. So they started out over here and eventually conquered everything. So their seat of power and the capital being in Chang'an meant the central government had firm control of this region. And this area used to be, you know, under the governance of Xiang Yu and Chu and the entire uh, Qi area was very prone to rebellion. So it was very hard to control this area because most of them didn't identify themselves with Liu Bang's uh, regime. So you need a lot of local princedom with a lot of power to kind of keep their land under control. So Huainan uh, became one of these princedoms. And by the time uh, the emperor passed to Han Wu Di, uh, Liu Xiu's time period, uh, when Liu Xiu was very young, he became emperor very, very young, I think 13-ish. Um, in the beginning, he had no firm control over the court because he was so young. He had to listen to his Empress Dowager, um, or uh, I guess it would be Empress Dowager's, it would not be his mom, but his grandmother. I don't know what the term it is for grandmother, but it was Dou Tai Ho, uh, who was in control of the government for a long time. And at the time, the Han used a type of governing system or philosophy that really relied on the teaching of Taoism, right? So we talked about this. They practice something called Wu Wei, uh, means you don't do anything, right? The, the nature has a way, has a path, has a Dao, and the world can rule itself and run itself, and the best thing the emperor could do is not interfere with that. So a practice of not doing too much, um, or we like to call in economy now the invisible hand of you know capitalism and market. Let the country run itself. Uh, that's essentially the belief for most of the early phases of the Han, uh, Western Han Dynasty, and that really came from uh, the ideology of the Qin Dynasty ended so quickly because they pushed for so many grand projects. Uh, they forced their people into labor, building the Great Wall. Uh, undertaking massive construction, basically disrupting the natural flow of things, uh, leading to rebellions and so forth. So they kind of overcorrected and went with the Taoist approach. But Han Wu Di Liu Xiu was not interested in following that trend. He had a few teachers that were more Confucianism in terms of teaching. So he wanted to shift the government towards Confucianism, but his um, grandmother uh, was very against that. And she had firm control of the power of the court when he was very young. So he had really no say. Uh, he tried to push for a sort of political revolution, a peaceful one, just kind of changing the law reform. Let's call it political reform. But it failed horribly. The grandmother was able to fire most of the officials he appointed, even killing some of them or exiling some of them uh, for trying to corrupt his young grandson, who she think is so obedient with the ways of Confucian teaching. Um, so that didn't go well. And finally, grandmother dies of old age. So Liu Xiu, still very young, uh, is thinking about reforms. And Liu Xiu did a lot of great reforms during his time. 
But his push for reform also upset a lot of the princedoms, uh, who was kind of becoming a burden on the country at that phase of the Han Dynasty as rebellion has mostly died down, the people have peaceful, but the princedom grew too big and self-sufficient, and they were eating away at tax revenues that could be going to the emperor. So Dosio was thinking about reforming some of the princedoms, abolishing some of them perhaps, and seven princedoms rallied together and had a rebellion of the seven princedoms. Uh, it was crushed very, very quickly. It took about three months. Uh, they fell one by one, and they were not an issue. At this time, the princedom of Huainan was under a man named Liu An, uh, who obviously is related to the imperial family, and he thought about joining the Seven Rebellion. Uh, and at the time, he had a chancellor who was very, very wise and did the calculation for his uh, lord that joining the rebellion would be a sure sign to doom this princedom. So he convinced the Lord to hand him control of the military, and immediately he shut the gates and put the entire princedom on defense, even sending out some men to fend off uh, the seven princedom who tried to come ally with them. So he kind of forced his Lord into uh, standing together with the central government, and when the seven princedom were crushed, they were spared. Uh, but Liu An, um, you know, had ambitions himself. He thought uh, he could be potentially someone who could replace Han Wudi. The main reason being is that Liu Xiu didn't have any sons at that time. So he felt like because he was young, talented, influential, related to the emperor, if let's say Liu Xiu dies at this point, he would be a very likely candidate to replace him. So he thought very highly of himself and he wanted to push this agenda, to push his status among all the other princes to make sure that he can be seen as the candidate. So he did a lot of things. Uh, one, one hand, he pushed his military strength. He tried to gather more forces uh, to make himself more formidable, I guess, in the chaos that could happen should the emperor die. Now, I have no clue why he thought the emperor would die. Uh, Dosio was young and Dosio was pretty healthy. Uh, but regardless, he also pushed a lot of uh, political agendas or in terms of like how society viewed him. And we're talking about society as the gentry class, like the class of the educated, uh, the political ruling class, so people who uh, read a lot. So he gathered a lot of scholars uh, in his princedom and asked them to write a collection of uh, political thoughts and philosophy based on not only uh, Taoist thinking, but also incorporating pieces of Confucian thinking, pieces of Yin Yang Jia, pieces of Mo Jia. So he basically did a nice collection of different political thinking at the time and wrote this book. And this book became called Huai Nan Zi, uh, basically written by a bunch, uh, mainly eight scholars that he gathered um, to come and write this book for him to kind of extend his political influence and also how um, society or the country as a whole uh, would see him. Uh, basically, all these gentry class would probably read the book and be like, you know, Liu An is such a forward thinker or something like that. And he presented this book as a gift to the emperor uh, to kind of tell the emperor, it's like, you should read this. This will help you uh, solidify, you know, the Taoist uh, type of ruling belief that's, you know, used by our ancestors. But Liu An uh, didn't realize that Liu Xiu wanted to push for Confucian reforms and really hated this book presentation. So uh, that didn't go well. Eventually, you know, Liu An's overstepping of the boundaries between, you know, being just a prince to someone who is aspiring to become an emperor would do him in and he would eventually uh, commit suicide after um, there's, there's a, the story is pretty long. He goes on for a couple of years in this kind of state until he started committing a few crimes uh, in terms of overstepping um, with his actions. In particular, his son uh, kind of really caused a lot of the issues. And eventually there's kind of, you know, this communication gap between the capital and China and them. And he thought he was doomed. So he eventually just committed suicide, even though Liu was pretty lenient with him. And the worst thing he was probably going to do to him was just exile him uh, but eventually, Huainan as a princedom got abolished after Liu An's death, and it became the Jiujiang Commandery. The princedoms and commanders are slightly different. Uh, in game, they kept uh, Huainan as a name, uh, even though really it should just be Jiujiang at this point. Uh, but anyways, uh, that part is uh, basically where we have with uh, Huainan as a book. It's just a collection of political thoughts and debates, uh, mainly based on Taoist belief, um, but there are other sort of classes like you even have Confucian thinking in there as well so it's a pretty expansive book 
um, to advance his you know status within this society uh, especially among the scholars in terms of how they might see him uh, it didn't end up working in his favor uh, the book did survive but only part of the book um, i think it had three sections only the first section survived um, it's still i think 21 chapter ish long I think the second section was only eight chapters and the third section was like 33, but the second and third uh, were destroyed. It's actually kind of curious how it survived given that how Liu Xiu really hated the book. Um, but anyways, uh, that is Huainanzi for you. Uh, it survived quite a long time. Uh, I think it was still complete by the Sui Dynasty, but then, uh, you know, it's a long history. Sui Dynasty will only be like, you know, 700 AD couple thousand years like a thousand and a half year to go to make it to the modern day and it didn't survive um in, in its entirety so that's huinanzi for you and i think at the end of the episode we'll talk about maybe we unlocked it already do we have a lu shi chun qiu yes so lu shi is master lu chun qiu is the spring autumn um, annals, I think it's how you usually call it. It's basically like a record. So Spring Autumn or Chun Qiu is a separate book. Lu Shi Chun Qiu is very different from it. Uh, Chun Qiu is kind of a historical record uh, conducted by Confucian students um, about the early stages of the Zhou Dynasty. Lu Shi Chun Qiu is a very different book. Um, it's very similar to why Huainanzi was written. This is why I'm kind of grouping the two together. Uh, so we'll talk about this at the end of the episode, but that's um, Huainanzi for you, and uh, I think that's pretty much our turn. We can probably upgrade a few things, but that's about it. I have no interest in... Ooh, should we sell food here? No, not here. We should sell food here once we get the upgrade. Yeah, this is really our only income place. Now, unfortunately, this is just not helpful for us. We're just going to have to wait for, fingers crossed, female commander. Alright, so that's it. Let's continue. Alright, so the Lound Rebels are forming together. Ying Yuan's group got destroyed by them. Very interesting. Um, we're not gonna let them escape. I think they will fight us. I'm not sure if they will retreat or not, but I think we do want to fight them. Maybe I'll get him killed. I'm very tempted with the killing him strategy. I'm actually pretty happy to see if they can take that, because if they can, we can take it later. That's our only way to really legally expand at this point. Please don't run. Ah, uh, we can catch him. Okay, then he's wiped from the field. This is even better. Alright, definitely night battle. I am kind of concerned about the actual terrain of this battle. Feels like there's going to be a slope and maybe too many trees for us to deploy our fire safely, in a sense. Um, but we'll see what we can do with that. Maybe we can deploy in the back, but let's go. Alrighty, so luckily we have the high ground. That's very good. Um, we could just fight here. There might be too many shrubs that will catch on fire, though. It's kind of tight. Yeah, I like this. They get into vision right when they break the tree line, or into range right when they break the tree line, so we can actually have vision on that. And then we can aim with that. And this group has fire arrows, right? He just learned it. We'll turn that on, and yes, we'll tell everyone to not move, even though this doesn't really work. Your trebuchets, if they start becoming wacky, they will still move, um, but that's the best we can do. Put them a little bit ahead. We're gonna need some room for these guys. Uh, it's a little bit off. This is fine. I should it should be a little bit more forward. There we go. 
Alright, so this group also, nobody moves. And then it's just about setting up flank. They do have cavalry. Um, how do we want to set it up though? Maybe like this? And then just keep a couple reserve on the side. I'll hide in the front. Is that a hell of arrows? We do want to use that. I'll see if he dies. We'll sit in the back. Nemesis? With them? With Zhang Jiao, perhaps? Yeah! Wow! One battle? Hmm. How should we play him? I can probably just wait here, get into a fight, have him come out and po uh, not poison volley, but a hell of arrow across where he's fighting to kill a lot of units, and then also shoot the flaming shots at the same time. I mean, I'm sorry, old man, we're plotting your death, but. I mean, historically speaking, you'd be headed to Shu around like 187, 188. But in the game, I think it's definitely a range of dates in terms of when they would like leave. So I don't know when exactly you will leave. I don't really want to let you take the troops with you. Don't beings are quite nice. Don't be shy, come out. I don't bite. Like even with the 50% boost, we, we barely have any damage. I mean, he's really good with bows. If we give him the bow, like 25% extra damage, 50% extra ammo, plus this, that, that's quite a lot of bonuses. But then he just takes the bow and run if he spawns that event, and that's just too risky. So, like, you know the range really, really well? We can still shoot. We're high ground, and some of the shots will miss, and uh, we'll get a couple hits in. Yeah, there we go. Miss three, hit five. Wow, that's a lot of troops. Um, Really bad morale, though. I want to mess with the cavalry a little bit. That's the only one I'm really scared of here. And maybe get some of those trees on fire. I guess we should aim for... the archers. I want to wait on that. Any chance we can draw them in? We can engage in that combat. We come out right here. We fire here. Hmm. Too messy. Oh, he died so quickly! Working better than I thought. Okay, I'm gonna send him out first. Uh, relax. It's just Shusie. It's just your heir. Adopted son. Adopted. Okay, he's come back to his senses. Let's just tribuche this first. Even the, the health arrows can wait. A lot of fire we want to start. We'll get that shot in. Why did you lose so much health? Oh, it's from the delegate from last fight. Okay, 
做的还不够好。任你滔滔不绝，在我听来，不过是盈盈狂吠罢了。胜利就在眼前。All right, it's time for the juggernaut to take care of the rest. Yeah, come across the front, please. Send one back here just in case. You see, they still move, right? Doesn't matter if you're in guard mode or not, they just move. Just can stop thinking about them not moving. You can see them running into turtle, doesn't do a thing. Okay, blowing fire on our side would not be good. Can he uh, shoot something before he gets on back in his horse? Because I know he can do it really quick on, on foot. Uh, he just wants to get mounted again. Yeah, the cavalry situation is taken care of. Why is he engaged in melee? Cover him. Try to snipe him. Do I trust this fight? Ah, we can do it. Have some confidence. See, look, look how far they went. I don't even want to move him back. Plus, one of them is out of ammo already. The one that didn't go a bunch of places. No one's gonna break through this juggernaut line. Is the crew still manning it? Wait, did they? Did they get off the machines? Oh, they did. Okay, they're, they're fine now. Hmm. Somehow they dismounted on the machines. And now we have to hit fire well, but right back into business. All right, let's give them a boost. No problem right there. They're done. Just get out. Yeah, who's going to really be able to beat this? This juggernaut thing in the front is just so strong. Fire at them. He's, he's going to win this too. Oh, the fire. Once we get a silver weapon. And the nemesis boost is on him? Wow. So I guess don't kill Zhang Jiao yet. There we go. No more assassinating Liu Chong. Yeah, just hold them off. Okay, no need to offer chase. You know, we. What's the point of guard mode if they just go to chase when they're out? He's unbreakable. Let's try to shotgun him. Can't dismount him? I gotta shotgun him from this side so I don't actually hit my own troops. Uh, not worth it. Get closer, get closer. All right, this is a good distance. All right, victory! Alrighty. So that was pretty straightforward. Ooh. Not a great weapon, but I think we still want to execute him. There's no reason to keep him alive. We can never get your old turbans, so yeah. Level 6. Okay, so access to cavalries, but not really useful on him right now. I think we go for patience. 
Um, well, it's dead man walking. Uh, whew. Get one extra army slot for temporarily. Wisdom River is definitely great. Help him with duels. Let's do that. So he has actually two more layers of this. This is very difficult to kill him. We can use the Lumberyard to kill him one more time. And then use the city to kill him one more time. Alright, that, that's probably the plan. I mean, if we don't end up killing him, it's okay too. We don't, we don't have to kill him. All right, back at home. Rebellion has spawned again. Ooh, Confucian Sage. It's not super good, so I'm not gonna sweat it. I'm not gonna actually fight it. Go for it. Obviously, we would like to see a capture, but it doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. It didn't happen, but he's not dead. We have another shot. And we have the level up that we want to see. So, definitely night battle here. And over here. Yeah, I think we're taking the spear. He's desired higher off. This is going to be higher. Uh, nothing we can do about it. I'm sorry. Until we can get another, maybe, administrator position. There's just not much we can do. So we're going to recall them. Maybe walk in here for a better heal and also not to get attacked by them during the end turn. And we still don't have a suitable character. Now we are probably rich enough to maybe try a ranged marriage to see if we can get one. There's, there's not many buildings to go for at this point. And for reforms, I think we go back on this path. There's nothing else super urgent. Level four. Hmm. Let me check. There's a couple of things to check. So we haven't built the three because it needs to be a small regional city. So there's no point to get this because it needs to be a regional city. And he's be an imperial city. Okay. So that would be a waste of reform. I think it's pretty obvious. I think we head for this. We'll pick up the trade influence one first, or do we want to pick level three state workshop and private workshop? We don't have too many of these right now, but we will. This is more money for us right now, just because the number of trade uh, that we actually have and the very few state workshops that we can actually upgrade. Like, there's one. That's it. Alright, so that's really all we can do. And uh, let's arrange marriage. Like, if we want to arrange marriage, we'll probably want to arrange marriage for... It doesn't matter who, because we're going to have to adopt right after... Right, it's gonna have to be a divorce followed by adoption. Super expensive. Uh, yeah, not a good idea. Let's just continue. We'll save the four thousand. We're gonna need it for future expenses. Ooh, looters. Okay. Uh, not a girl. He summoned himself again with a ridiculous replenishment rate. Um, I mean, it's not a hard fight. We would have to fight this manually because we would like him to get injured again. Ooh, silver weapon. Oh, Tangzhu, the traitor. Um, anyways, let's go. Alrighty, so the fight is not super difficult. Um, how to get Jesse killed is probably slightly harder. We're gonna have to find... yeah, we're gonna find an edge, so I think we'll use this. Um, I don't think they will charge out, given the size of their force, but not certain, so we'll have to see.
Alright, and I think we'll use this battle to talk about our book, Lu Shi Chunqiu. So as we stated, um, it's written by a man named Master Lu. And Master Lu was... Wow, they're charging out! Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit of excitement here, I guess. Master Lu was uh, a prime minister for the Qin Kingdom um, around the time of Qin Shi Huang's father, Qin Shi Huang being the first emperor of Qin. Um, when he was, oh, well, his father, before he became the king of Qin, he was a political hostage in, I think, the kingdom of Zhao. So he wasn't originally like going to be the heir. And uh, he was given away as, you know, usually a son is given away as a political hostage. He used his ability. I hope he gets killed by the cavalry. Or I hope he bounces back and then gets killed by the cavalry. Bounce back. Right, so Master Lu. Yeah, back to our topic. Um, so originally he was just a merchant. And merchants are not viewed very highly in society. Do they lose all the charge? No, they don't. There's no suppression on the fire. Yeah, but you can take care of that. Uh, he was just a merchant in the kingdom of Zhao. And he befriended, you know, at the time, the hostage son from the kingdom of Qin. Is he going to bounce back? Or not? And when he befriended him, uh, Qin's old king died. So they needed to recall some of their sons. He, he knew that if they recalled the sons, he had a chance to become heir. Oh dear. Sorry guys. The battle's happening. <laughs> so the main thing Master Li did was he was able to smuggle the son back into Qin. And eventually he became the king of Qin. And he would be the father of the first emperor of Qin. So eventually the sun united all the uh, six kingdoms. Uh, fight, fight to the death, fight to the death. How much health do you have? 400, you don't die? Right, long story short, <laughs> Master Li makes it back to Qin with um, uh, Qin Shi Huang's dad. And he becomes a very valued mem member of the Tin's court because of his act of helping uh, get the hostage son back. And eventually he becomes the prime minister. Now because he was a merchant himself, he was not very valued in society. Um, at least under Confucian society. Not that Tin was Confucian society, but in general, merchants are seen as kind of this middleman culture, right? They don't actually produce anything. They just make a profit selling. So they're not very seen as, you know, highly valued members of society and Master uh, Lu was not very well educated himself, but he didn't like that image, right? He was the prime minister at the time, he wanted to get respect from the gentry class. So he hired or he patronized a lot of scholars. You patronizing, you know, a lot of people was a very common thing back then. Any chance he can come back and die? No, 400 health, unfortunate. Bad, bad timing by us. Where is... where did he go? He overchased. Okay, they're charging again after the tributary run out of shots. They think it's safe now, but uh, they're mistaken. Shoot him. The silver weapon's still pretty strong. Um, so he, you know, got a lot of... Wait, what's, what's he doing? Don't stand it where the fire is going to be going. Oh, and also one of them need to have fire well turned back on. Right, so not only did he patronize a lot of scholars and invite them to stay with him, he also... Asked them to write a book for him. He asked them to write basically an encyclopedia um, of different things they have seen, um, different uh, uh, philosophies that they have learned. So Confucianism, uh, Yin Yang Xue, so basically like Wu Jia, Yin Yang Jia, Mo Jia, Fa Jia, 
Nongjia, Bingjia, so like agriculture stuff, astronomy stuff, um, a, basically a big collection of encyclopedia. And he, you know, crafted this book. And he was very, very proud of it, and he called it Lu Shi Chunqiu, named after himself. Um, and he put the book, the script out um, near the capital, and he put the script written carved into like a, a not stone, I think in lumber. And he basically told everyone, if you can find one mistake within the book and tell me so that I can correct it, I'll pay you a thousand gold. Uh, so the idea here was he was trying to make perfection, uh, basically trying to have a book that can last the ages. And uh, obviously he never had to pay up because no one really dared to point out a mistake, but it's still a very impressive collection of knowledge from the period, whether it's from different uh, groups and he had thought that maybe this book once finished would kind of cement him as the f you know father figure in terms of Qin's um, philosophy and ruling belief. He had basically a big dream of him being an influencer among the scholars. Uh, but unfortunately for him, um, he got involved in some uh, I guess we call them back court affair or inner court affair uh, dealing with the emperor's mom, uh, Qin Shi Huang's mom, uh, who he helped, you know, guide back into Qin. There was this, 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 this scandal or conspiracy theory that Qin Shi Huang is actually his son. Like there's a affair situation, and he was eventually asked to suicide. So he didn't have a great ending under Qin Shi Huang as well, uh, or not. Un well, basically similar to Huai Nanzi's book, uh, the person who kind of compiled this book, neither of which wrote the book. Liu Wan didn't write Huai Nanzi and Lu, Lu, uh, Lu Bu Wei didn't write Lu Shi Chunqiu, but both of them kind of attached their name to it. Uh, Huai Nanzi, you know, named after the princedom that he was ruling under, and Lu Shi Chunqiu just flat out put his name on it. Um, they were trying to create this kind of encyclopedia of what's called Zha Jia, or basically a collection of different uh, beliefs. Uh, neither book was very valued by the ruler. One went with Confucianism uh, in terms of the Han Dynasty, and one with legalism in the case of uh, the Qin Dynasty. Uh, but these books have very similar, uh, very you know, similar fates and similar circumstances. So I thought it'd be nice to talk about both of them together. Anyways, we struggled out of that victory, kind of a mess trying to tell a story and micro at the same time. But yeah, we got a victory. The Yellow Turbans have one county left. So we're almost done with the Mandate War, and uh, we talked about two more books. And Lu Shi Chunqiu is one of those books that, you know, when you first hear the name, you often get confused, thinking that it's just Chunqiu or the Spring Autumn uh, Annals, which is like a history book. But really, it's more of an encyclopedia of different philosophies during this period, and also just knowledge in general. So encyclopedia, I think, is a great term for it. Uh, we're going to learn Turning the Tide. So as long as there's a routing unit near him, all our units get 25% extra damage and 10 points morale. Um, it's either that or patience. Actually, as we shift away from the old turban fights, maybe patience is better. And also we kind of want reach, so that we get one extra army and also 25% extra movement. This can wait. This is a win more skill. Alright, that's good. And we might as well give him this, you know. If he can't use it, we might as well use it. 5% extra to... Ooh, but he already has one. 10% peasantry or 5% industry? Yeah, I'm gonna stick to 10% peasantry here. Alright, one more piece of land, which I don't think we can reach in a turn, but we'll try. Once again, no suitable female generals, so can't get any marriage deals. They summoned another general, but I think we should still be strong enough to handle them. Let's see if that's the case. There's another one on that side. So we're going to get rid of this group first. And maybe head back? Nope, can't. Um, they're not replenishing. Or I think they will anyways. But we're going to have to wait a turn to get rid of them. Give him the book just to keep him relatively happy. It's from the rank up. Yeah, at least we temporarily fix the satisfaction issue. Alright, do we not have a commander? Oh, there's one, but 
He's probably a spy. Oh, from Liu Hong's faction. And maybe not a spy. But I really want to wait for a female. Let's continue. All right, so the Imperial uncle, Liu Chong himself, ended <laughs> Zhang Zhao's faction, took the last piece of land. The rebellion has ended. The Zhang brothers have been crushed, and the rebellion dies with them. While some remnants may remain, they are no longer a threat to the High Empire. This is a glorious victory, and we celebrate. Looters also got wiped. We got 4,000 extra in the bank. Once united, must divide. Lord Lu Zhi. The stability of the Empire remains in balance. The rise of the Zhang brothers was made possible by the weakness and weakness of an old and flawed government, further diminished by the ambitions of corrupt bureaucrats and rogue warlords. That which was once divided, uh, united is now dividing, and war looms large once again. Do not stand idly by, Lu Zhi. Through your wisdom and strength, guide the people to a better and brighter future. So we're transitioning to the next phase. Uh, continue to build your power and prestige. Beware of ambitious rogue warlords and governors. Restore peace and order no matter the cost. So this is maybe the point where we will see him leave. Um, there's not much we can do with it. We kind of tried to make him kill himself, but that didn't work out. Uh, we can go after Zhang Yan, technically. Oh, Dong Zhuo is already spilling over. Or we can let Zhang Yan fester and uh, head for this horse pasture while it's still under yellow turban control. Because there's a lot of land that we can grab right here. I think that's what we will do. Oh, he came himself with Luo Jun. We march. Because we're going to be in the competition with him to grab that. Mm, to go our movement away. Alright, that's really all we can do. It's going to be a little bit awkward. Okay, so we did get an extra slot. And the, I mean, it's going to be weird building this up. I think we're going to build this as an income commandery and just go with the inn. Right, we want just as much base income as possible. We kind of ignore that this county is kind of useless. But most of our counties are useless, so we can't really do too much about that. I don't know if they can delegate this win, but we'll try. No. So we have to fight this one. Um, hold on. Let me withdraw first. Let me give them weapons. Who's going to be our best duelist? It's going to be you. Take the axe. Take the extra stat. We're gonna fight this. We're gonna duel him. Run over all these units. The spear one's gonna be a little difficult, but we can run over all these, run over these. Mm, or we can just run to the settlement. And wait till they assault us. No, we kill them now. We also had night battle. Let's go. Alrighty, so I'm guessing they will charge me. Oh, I guess incorrectly. Um, ah, they don't want to duel him either. Oh, they want to duel him, of course. Well. I still would like to get the duel set up because oh, now you don't want to duel. Wow, this is very treacherous. Hold on, we should have done this on such fast speed. He lost his mount. You sure no one wants to duel me? My god, these guys. Okay, we go after the range units first. I'm going to try to grab this square and just fight my way out. I have double health, so one of those few generals with double health that should help us. Okay, while they're busy with him, 
Maybe we can get a flank charge off. We'll use that. And I'll run away. Let him continue to fight these guys. There we go. Let me kill one of you. Can I kill the other one? I mean, Xun Yu was a badass in history. You know, he's the one who tried to assassinate Dong Zhuo. So seeing him fight like this, it's all good. Cao Cao took his storyline in romance. He's gonna route. That that part is for sure. But we're gonna try to do our best before he routes. He has resiliency, only he doesn't, so he's the only one I have to kind of watch the health for. It's gonna be a slow duel, but the other guy has a Gun, so almost no damage. He's gonna bounce back, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's already bounced back. Do we have this? Yes, we have this. Okay, so their morale is already weakened. It'll be a slow win. Come back here. Can we kill her? Here, we can see more. <laughs> he has no abilities. He has no abilities. Okay. It'll be an easy win. Alright, do your best. Do your best. Alright, at the same time, maybe help him while he's focusing on the spear. We can charge from behind. Look at that. Yeah, maybe it's me doing most of the work, but still. Shinyo did great. And Huang Gai is winning. This was never going to be an easy fight given how they had one turn to replenish, but it's going well. Is she unbreakable? She's not. So she will break to army loss at the end, I think. Especially after he dies. Oh, there's only so many of you. There we go. There we go. Army loss is hitting her. She's gone. Right, I'm gonna capture this tower so he doesn't get shot to death. Oh, come on. Don't get killed. Oh. 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 Well, they, they got a boost. <laughs> Fallen friend. Okay. I mean, it really didn't... Okay. It didn't matter who we gave the weapon to. They were always going to duel the one who doesn't have the weapon, I guess, in this case. But we got the win. Alrighty. That was a little tricky, but we got it done. And we got the general with the law enforcer, giving us extra public order faction-wide. Perfect. So these won't get saved, so I guess we won't... Actually, we can end turn here and uh, get the save point. Uh, obviously, going for flexibility here. I think he's so healthy that he can stay on the field. Do we want to just force a delegate here? Because we can, most likely. I can grab... Hmm... We'll just take the delegate here. Because we got the garrison help. We'll recall both. I don't think there's going to be a rebellion next turn. Yep. So that's fixed. Uh, Fervor is gone because rebellion's gone. So now everything should transition back quite nicely, which also means we no longer need this building. It's probably going to become a private workshop. We're going to get rid of that. Um. Did he pick up an injury trait? No, so that's even better. So that's all done. Law Enforcer will probably go on him. Yeah, once that demolishes, this will be positive one. Everything is going to come around. 
this can go away as well now as well. Um, we'll probably build a conscription building, maybe. Uh, either that or... Yeah, it's probably... Uh, uh, stay workshop first for corruption reduction in the future. But I think that's pretty much it. We still don't have generals to use. And let's just end turn to get a save. Oh, Beigong Boyu died. Okay. Improve relationship with our heir who might ditch us at any time. Ah, finally. The female commander has shown up. So we got ourselves future daughter. Um, and Lu Bu is probably going to come over to our faction if he is still single. Let's take a look. Yep. So we're going to get that marriage going. And uh, we're going to have a new heir potentially. He's probably going to be slapped onto Chancellor for now. We're going to be in a race to grab... Uh, the horse pasture against Liu Bei. We're probably just not going to beat him to it. That's a bit unfortunate. Um, but maybe we'll grab something else. Or maybe we should turn our attention to the bandits if we're just not going to beat them in terms of that speed. No point to drag our army that way if we can't get anything. Might as well try to take some of this land. It looks like they're kind of expanding down. Um, who are they at war with? Ding Yuan. So we should get the marriage done before he gets wiped. And maybe watch him get wiped and then take over all of Taiyuan from... Zhang Yan to avenge him. So that's kind of our strategy going forward. Uh, we'll continue to talk about the books. There are a ton of Confucian book left. There are a couple military strategy books left. And then there are some just kind of miscellaneous, um, you know, economic books around and a couple medical books. So we'll talk about those as we proceed. Probably going to talk about a huge chunk of Confucian book in one of these future episodes. And um, we'll see you guys then. Bye.